If you're serious about security for your macOS computer and you want to go a little bit further than the average user might go, there are some tools that can keep you safe from both evil made attacks and malicious network traffic you can install. We'll check out some free tools that can do this on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have a macOS computer and you're facing an elevated threat, or you're just serious about security, there's a couple extra things you can do to lock it down. Now, the reason I say these are extra is because for the average user, this might go above and beyond what's useful. And one of the reasons for that is because some of these tools can generate quite a lot of pop-ups when they're initially configured. Now, what they're for is preventing against specific types of attacks. And two of these that are more common in, for example, countries like China, might be something like an evil made attack. Now, an evil made attack might be a business person going on a business trip, locking their uh, laptop in their hotel room safe, and then leaving to go to dinner, only to find that when they come back, someone's been into their hotel room, accessed their safe, and uploaded something onto their computer. Now, the way to prevent against this is a program called Do Not Disturb, which was created by former NSA researcher Patrick Wardle. Now, this is a tool that allows you to see a log of everyone who's basically opened your computer. You'll be able to see if someone has accessed it since the last time you put it away. And it gives you a way of also seeing what that person has done on your computer while they were accessing it. Now, another tool we, we will be taking a look at is called Lulu, which means protection or shield in Hawaiian. Now, what this tool is for is detecting malicious network activity. And you can think of why this would be useful because any malware is going to need to eventually contact a server to get instructions, meaning when we have a new program that's suddenly requesting access to the internet and we don't know what it's for, perhaps it's unsigned or it has a virus total score of more than zero, we might want to be concerned about that because it's probably a sign of malware attempting to communicate back to a command and control server. Now, in order to try out these free, awesome tools, we'll need to go to the objective-c.com website, and we'll need to have a macOS computer ready to try out. You can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you have any problems setting this up. Once you have your macOS computer ready to go, then we can begin. Now, I really love the tools that are hosted on objective-c.com. They're written by Patrick Wardle, and they're all open source. You can go to the GitHub and see the way they're written, so you can trace down exactly what they're doing and make sure they're not doing anything extra or that they're not supposed to. Now, that's really great because these tools are super valuable and they are free. So there's really no reason not to install them if you don't mind the fact that they do sometimes generate a lot of alerts. Now, the reason for that is because we're looking for certain types of behavior that might be associated with somebody getting into our computer and either attempting to install or successfully installing something onto our system. Now, the first we're going to look at is Do Not Disturb. Now, Do Not Disturb is a program that is designed to detect against evil made attacks. And what an evil made attack is would be somebody going through your computer and opening it and doing a bunch of stuff in it. So what this is designed to do is to, once we install it, create a log of every single time this has been opened and even link with your iPhone so that if somebody is going into your device, you instantly get an alert that somebody's in there doing something that you didn't authorize them to do. Now, installing this is incredibly easy. And while it does generate a lot of alerts, AKA every time you actually open your computer, it will generate one. Uh, it is worth it because if you're interested in knowing the last time your system was accessed and what was done when it was accessed, this will give you all that information that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and open the installer, which we can access by just going to the website and clicking on download. I'll click on open. And here we can see my options are to upgrade because I've already installed this. But if I click here, it'll go ahead and ask for my password. So this will also give us the ability to take a picture. So if somebody is going through our system, then we can also, uh, through having this link to our app, have it actually alert us with a photo of the person that's gone through our stuff. So that is pretty awesome. All right, so Do Not Disturb is now installed. We can press next. And normally this requires a reboot, but because I already installed this in a previous example, uh, we won't need to restart. But just be aware that if you're uh, installing this for the, for the first time, it will require a uh, restart, or it can. So, all right, so now we have this tool installed on our system, but where would we go to actually use it? Well, we can see this little icon here and we can see both the ability to disable it 
view the log, and set preferences. So under preferences, we can see that we can do passive mode, no icon, so we can hide it. Um, we can uh, do remote, no remote tasking, uh, aka disable the iOS app. There's a couple of other things we can do, such as set to execute an action um, every time something's done, and we can also update. Now here, I don't have an iPhone, so I'm not going to link this, but if we do, this is where we could just pair it with a QR code, and this would give us the ability to actually access it. Anyway, so that will give us the ability to access this remotely and get an alert anytime somebody begins messing with this. So what does that actually look like? Well, we can click on view log, and here is a list of all the different times that this computer has been opened and the immediate actions that have taken place after it was opened. Now this isn't going to log absolutely everything you do on your computer, it will only log the things that happen immediately after it was opened. And that's useful because if somebody only opens it for a second and then does a couple things and closes it quickly, that's really the only information you need. You don't need a complete list of everything you've done on the computer that day because you might not want to be recording that information. So great, we've checked out Do Not Disturb. And again, this is great for if you're leaving your computer in an area where it might be exposed or if you're worried about somebody getting into your computer without your permission. Now onto the next tool we're gonna to take a look at is Lulu, which is Hawaiian for shield or protection and it is a great tool for protecting it against another kind of threat, which is something that doesn't quite fit into the way that the macOS filter uh, firewall was designed to defend against, that being something on the inside that's trying to connect out. So while the firewall built into macOS is great at preventing from things on the outside trying to get in, if somebody has installed something on our computer, then the case would actually be that there would be a program trying to get out, usually to get instructions or to check in or, or to exfiltrate data if it, that's what the person is trying to get. Now, Lulu is a great way of preventing against that because anytime a process attempts to uh, connect to the internet at large, it'll ask you to set a rule. And this can either be a permanent rule or a temporary rule, it's really up to you. But Lulu has some additional things that make it really, really useful, such as the ability to query virus total, which will basically check the process that's running this and see whether or not it has a virus total score of more than zero. If it does, you might want to seriously consider not letting it connect to the internet. And you can also click on the ancestry, but let's go ahead and install it so we can get a look at how that works. Now we can just go ahead and click on install. And I already support Patrick on Patreon. I recommend you do as well. Uh, and I will open this. And of course, I've already installed this. But just to show you what it looks like, we'll open the Lulu installer. And this as well, we will click on upgrade. So I'll go ahead and enter my password. And once this finishes installing, again, you will need to restart this if it's your first time installing. Now that this is finished installing, I'm gonna go ahead and actually let it restart just to make sure that everything is up to date and installed properly. So I'm gonna restart this as soon as the computer finishes booting back up. All right, now that we've restarted our system, the first thing we get is actually a prompt from Lulu. So here we see in the alert that another Objective-C tool is attempting to connect to objective-c.com. So we can see exactly where it's attempting to connect. We can see the process path, we can see the IP address and the port, and then we can get into some more uh, elaborate stuff by clicking on here to see where it was signed from. So we can see the specific Apple um, developer ID. We can see additionally if there's any sort of virus total uh, hit. So if we saw anything other than zero out of 59, we would probably want to be a little bit suspicious about this. And we can also see the ancestry, which means we can see where it was launched from. So all this means that we can set rules kind of intelligently based on what we see here, uh, because if this was attempting to connect to some crazy malware domain and the virus total you know, was you know, 10 out of 59 and the ancestry was something weird, we definitely would not want to allow this to connect to the internet. So as it is, we will uh, click on allow. And what we've done by doing so is actually update this list. Now you can see this update, this little icon up here, which gives us the ability to go into preferences or rules. So first let's go to preferences and we can see that there's a couple things we can immediately select like allowing Apple programs to be automatically whitelisted, allowing previously installed applications, that being everything previously installed up until the point that you installed Lulu. And then you can have the ability to apply rules globally. So you can also run both passive and no icon mode. No icon mode means it is eliminated from your taskbar up here and then of course an update. So lastly, let's check out the rules so we can understand a little bit how they work. 
Now this kind of reminds me of a program I used to use called Little Snitch, which was a really interesting program that would allow you to see every outbound connection that was going on on your computer and selectively allow or deny it. Now you would be amazed at how much traffic is actually going on when you're just using your computer like normal. And this is a list of all the different processes that have been whitelisted, blacklisted, or otherwise uh, kind of given rules on your system to allow them or disallow them from contacting other servers over the network. Now here you can see there's uh, it's kind of divided into Apple, default, third party, or user applications. And you can see that some of these have been blocked, some of them have been allowed, and you can update this at any time. Now, anytime you run something new, it's going to pop up and request that you set a rule. And that can be pretty annoying the first time that you do things because if you're using software like normal, the first time after you install this, it'll ask you to basically set a bunch of rules. And again, it was even asking for permission to update another tool by Objective-C. So you really do get flooded with a lot of alerts when you first start using that. That being said, this is probably your best line of defense against a malicious program that's attempting to connect to something over the internet. So if somebody was doing something nefarious, like trying to exfiltrate your files, trying to listen in on your microphone, or otherwise doing something bad on your computer, you would probably notice the activity in a bunch of suspicious network connections that were suddenly popping up. Without these tools, you would have no way of knowing whether somebody had access to your computer or if somebody was connecting to it remotely and causing it to exfiltrate data. So both of these tools are a great way for the more security-minded macOS users to keep a lockdown on their computer, even if they're going somewhere where that might not be totally physically possible to keep track of their computer all the time. While Lulu and Do Not Disturb are powerful tools for locking down your macOS computer, there are, like anything else, some limitations. One of those limitations is alarm fatigue, and for the average user, the number of alerts you get from this tool might be enough to make it unusable. If at any point you find yourself not paying attention to the alerts, the tool immediately becomes less useful. So make sure that you're actually going to pay attention and that the number of alerts you get for this isn't outside your comfort zone. Another factor is that anyone who knows you're using this tool can also get around it. So don't go around bragging about this awesome new security tool you're using, because if someone's targeting you specifically, they can always do something to get around the tool if they know that you're using it. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any ideas, you can send me a message on Twitter for future episodes. And if you have any problems installing this tool, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. That's all we have for now. Thanks for watching.